Hello, everyone. Welcome back to the AAS YouTube channel, and we're going to start a new series on the AAS journal editorial operations side of the house uh, on what happens to your manuscripts from the very time you decide to submit it out to when it's um, a decision is made. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> 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 did, did, that, did that approve of the decision or did it not approve of the decision? Our little mascot. <laughs> you know, it's, uh, it's keeping it real, keeping it real. What's the dog's name, is it Alex? Oh, Seedal. He doesn't like when he heard the garage door open, so. Ah, uh, yes. uh, 12 foot, if dog. it was 12 inch size self is going to take someone on. <laughs> cool. So in this new series, I'm super happy to have with us today, um, Janice Sexton and Alex Andrews Aguilera. Hi, Alex. Hi, Janice. Hi, Frank. It's good to be here. Hello. Alex, where are you at? I'm in Pflugerville, Texas. I'm a north suburb of Austin. Suburb of Austin. Okay, cool. Cool. And Janice, where are you at? I'm just south of Denver in Parker, Colorado where we got a whole bunch of snow in the mountains. So the ski, a ski resort opened today and people are skiing probably till the middle of June. Wow, <laughs> wow. that's amazing. Yeah. Uh, wow, so as you've probably uh, figured out, we are a distributed operation. We have people um, all over the globe, um, all over the states uh, working on the manuscripts. So we don't have a particular office that uh, we all go into when we deal with your manuscripts. Uh, so, Alex, what is your what is your current position uh, with the Double H Journals? I'm the senior publications editor. Awesome, Janice. I'm the editorial operations manager, and um, we also have one assistant who lives up in Canada, and she's Lakshmi, and she works two hours every day morning for us processing new and revised manuscripts. Very cool. Very cool. Uh, Janice, what's your history with the Double H Journals? My history, um, about 31 years ago, I sold Helmet Apps Office, their first word processor, electronic. They, they were starting to put, they will be, they, they put in all the referees and all the authors' names into a database system in this word processor. So after we sold it to them, Iona, who was the manager, uh, said, I'm terrified of this. Can you work part time for us? So I did. And then my office, my boss closed down his sales department. And I called Iona up and said, Hey, they just laid us all off. And she says, Oh, wait a minute, I'll get the paperwork ready. You can work for us full time. Cool. So that's how I started working with the app J with helmet app wow. 30, 30 years ago in January last this January. Wow. So um, it's been a great experience. I've had three editor in chiefs, all wonderful. Mm -hmm. And um, Iona taught me a lot about how to treat our authors and reviewers and with kid gloves. And they are the most important part of the journal is our authors and referees, Definitely. reviewers. Definitely. Absolutely. And, and I've tried to carry that on whenever I've taught uh, trained all of our um, assistants over the years. So I've been uh, working with great staff from Tucson to Maryland to Canada and back to the States. And now we have Alex who is just out of this world. So it's been really a great experience and um, I'm happy to still be working for them. By the way, I love your shirt. <laughs> Thanks. It is. Uh, I am so in love with these buttons. I have my phone decorated with them. Awesome. <laughs> I have my laptop decorated with them. In case so. anybody's interested, there you go. I, <laughs> I, have, a I, know. I have a, yeah. a, a uh, illegal design. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and Alex, how about you? How long uh, have you been? What's your history with the Double Edge Journal? Um, I but after I graduated college, I interviewed with the AAS and have been with them for about five years. Five years, five years. Five wow. years in August, yeah. That is great. Congratulations. Yeah. Do you get a do you get a five year pin or something like that from the AAS? I don't know. Good we'll question. find out. Yeah. yeah. I guess we'll find out. <laughs> Dear Kevin. Uh, <laughs> 
That is so <laughs> cool. That is awesome. Um, so Alex, roughly how many new submissions uh, come in per week and how many do you handle and what do you do when manuscripts first come in? Oh gosh, Janice, do you know the... I can. I can easily tell you that 100 new manuscripts, at least 100 new manuscripts a week and another 200, over 200 more revised ones. So in a week, we could uh, at least 300, 350 manuscripts come across our desk to quality check before we send them off to the scientific editors. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's and that's good. probably a low number. <laughs> and that's, that's counting seven days a week. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. it's about 50 a day. Um, yeah, more or less, yeah. yeah. Wow. More on the weekends, less during the week. Really? Mm -hmm. uh, and who handles what part of that when they first come in? Well, the new and revised ones, we all handle it, but uh, mostly Lakshmi and I handle them um, up until Lakshmi quits for the day. And then Alex takes over and finishes off any that are still left um, because she's doing mostly post acceptance okay. and sending okay. chasers to reviewers and authors, telling them to get in the reviews. And um, so that, that who, that's, we all, we can all do everything, but um, we sort of have a plan so that it goes very quickly uh -huh. and smoothly. So that's, that's who handles those. And the first thing we do is we, um, we have to check for duplicate authors in the system. So we have to merge a lot of names. So if you get a manuscript with 300 names on a paper, you have to, we, we actually go through and merge every single one when there's um, duplicates in our system. That's part of the quality check. We also check for duplicate manuscripts or series manuscripts okay. so that we can make sure that the scientific editors who were chosen on the first one can be chosen on the second series. Right. Um, so that's pretty important. Um, we also check through manuscripts for missing references. Sometimes the system, um, our submission system, doesn't completely make a good PDF, merged PDF file. So there'll be question marks all through the manuscript. Oh, right. We check for those and then ask the authors to upload one that does not have those. So the authors are contacted and I can guarantee most of them reply within five minutes <laughs> with, a, with a clean <laughs> PDF file. Okay. Um, so that's another thing that we check. Uh, we also check to see if an off NSC is on the list, author list, because we don't, we, we need to alert the lead editor and scientific editors, lead editor mostly, so they don't um, send a manuscript to someone who's an author, uh, like, uh, oh, okay. so we alert the lead editors that there's a scientific editor who's a co-author, mm -hmm. so they're aware of that. Uh -huh. um, we check to see if the abstract is over 250 words. And if it is, for new manuscripts, we'll ask them to fix it. We'll send them a message asking them to fix it when they send in their revision. Mm -hmm. So um, we don't have to stop the new manuscripts process right away. Got it. Okay. Um, and then we, uh, that's... I'm curious what, uh, roughly what fraction of manuscripts come in that exceed the 250 word abstract limit? Uh, it's, it's probably less than 10% okay. are over the 250 word. Um, now that we have research notes um, is allowing abstracts starting May 1st, um, we check for those as well. And I, there are a smaller number of manuscripts that come into us, our research notes, but still I think I've set back three already that the abstract was over the 150 word limit, which is, is kind of unbelievable, but it happens. Um, no, it's a note. <laughs> <laughs> and um, we check the references to make sure that they haven't, uh, sometimes they'll use someone else's like a uh, different, different publication um, tech. And so their references aren't, 
um, in the same order as the AAS references should be. So we ask them to fix it if they've used numbers instead of um, the last name of the author and the year. So we ask them to fix that before it even goes to the scientific editor. So mm -hmm. because it's easier for the referee right. um, if it's done correctly. And we also check for alphabetical order. So if they're not in alphabetical order, the references, we ask them to fix that as well. Right. So there is a lot of things that we have to check <laughs> to make sure all the parts are there. And uh, once that's done, um, we can send an acknowledgement and then they get a copyright um, agreement sent to them right after that automatically. Okay. Alex, how many um, Post referee reminders do you send in this week? <laughs> <laughs> That's a good question. Monday, I mean, it's a red arrow next to what manuscript means to be reminded, and the whole page can just be filled with red arrows. That and has to like, go out. If there's like a hundred, usually there's a hundred, okay. at least a hundred in the system. That has uh, to be a week, a day, a week. No, so if you look, if oh, at uh, any given time. Yeah, yeah. There's um, if you look under. If she goes in to look at chasers, mm -hmm. there's probably 119 files in there that have to be chased. And some are chased already, some are not. I think I've gotten one or two of those. Um, <clears throat> so I'll tell you my method of madness uh, on, on getting referees to um, reply. So on the first reminder that they're late, uh, I let your magic do its thing, uh, and most are pretty good about that. They'll usually get their report in, or they'll send some, you know, reason why they need a little extra time, and that's just fine. So I sort of let your first message do its do its magic. Uh, if you send the second one, that's when I get in, <laughs> and I contact the referee directly and say, <clears throat> "Soon, please." Um, and then if the third one comes, uh, then I'm all over it and I'm already actually beginning a search for a new referee um, because I'm not going to let it get out of hand. Um, so that's sort of my method of madness. So um, I appreciate your first magic that usually does its thing. So cool. Um, what happens if a author or referee has trouble uploading? something for one reason or another, whatever. Sure, there's a, some, a few problems that can occur during the submission process. Um, the PDF file doesn't compile, so it just spins. Generally, I'll go in and check it, and it's um, like one this morning, they chose the wrong type of file, so it needed an article file, but it didn't have one. Uh -huh. So it could not compile a manuscript. So all I did was just go in and change the type and it worked fine. The system nowadays um, can figure out what is a manuscript file and what is a figure file. But sometimes the authors will upload the figure files and just an ms.pdf file. So unless you choose the type for that ms.pdf file, Got it. can't compile a PDF, so it spins. I think that's the majority of our problems that we have with the submission site. Um, I, th I think. <laughs> um, but sometimes the authors will not upload a revised or a response to referee. They forget to upload that file, so we ask them to upload it um, after we're do during our quality check. Right. Um, as far as a reviewer, sometimes they can't log into the system or they're traveling and they'll ask us to upload a, a report for them. So they send me a message and I'll upload it. Whoever has sent the last reminder, they'll send the chaser will send a message. I can't get this uploaded. Can you put it up there for us? Okay. Um, sometimes they send the reports directly to the scientific editors. Yes. You can upload yourself. Yes, um, for them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, and worst comes to worst, I know uh, at least a couple of times you've reached out directly to help people um, upload one thing or another or whatever the issue might be. Um, so I guess the message is, uh, you know, Janice and Alex are there to help you. Um, Definitely. The, with the submission process, if bumps arise in the process. Um, so feel free to reach out to them. Um, and do pay attention to their reminders. <laughs> 250 word abstracts, getting your reports in, <laughs> kind of good stuff. Uh, so what's the, uh, so it goes, so you touch the manuscript at every stage from submission to revision um, on both sides, author and referee. And so this process goes on. Uh, and then eventually a decision is made on the manuscript. And so what is, what is the last thing that you do with the manuscript post-decision? So then it goes, yeah, so then it goes to post-acceptance. Uh -huh. I usually get it at that point. Um, the first thing I do is just check the acceptance letter. Um, sometimes the SEs ask that authors make final corrections. Um, I'll send it back to the author to have them make those final corrections. Okay. Um, I'll confirm the journal assignment. Sometimes they don't match in our system versus what the SE wrote to the author. Um, and then I just check to make sure that we have everything before it goes to production. So like source files, um, we'll either ask for a Word file or a tech file, the figure source files, uh, making sure they're individual figure source files, not just one PDF. Uh, we need a copyright agreement. Um, we also need um, UAT concepts, the Unified Astronomy Thesaurus. We ask about one, we ask for one to 12 concepts. Um, usually it's noted in our system if you have a companion paper or it's part of a series. Um, I'll ask the author at that point if they want to wait for the companion paper or we'll send it off to production. Um, I think that's about it. How do you, so I have a couple of questions on that. So how do you court, sometimes uh, manuscripts will want to have a PR campaign associated with their university or NSF or a funding agency, I should say in general. Um, how, do, how do we handle coordinating PR things? So we make a note for our production team to coordinate with the author a press release or the actual date that the article is published. Um, when it's passed in production, the authors receive a letter stating when they should be receiving their proofs, when they should be receiving their article charges, and then how to coordinate a press release with um, production. Got it. Got it. Okay, and sometimes uh, after an article is accepted, authors will decide they want to make changes to their manuscript. <clears throat> what happens then, Alex? Yeah, those are my favorite. <laughs> yes, I know. <laughs> um, yeah, so usually they'll email me or they'll email their SE asking to make changes. I'll send the manuscript back to the author in the system to upload. I ask for a cover letter and a all the changes in the manuscript to be in bold. It just makes it easier for the SE to see the Absolutely. changes right away. So it doesn't take any longer than you upholding it. And, um, so, and then it's either they'll make the correction of proof or we'll send production the updated files. Right. Yeah. Uh, yes. Those are my favorites. And they decide to change things after acceptance. Um, sometimes it's okay. They're just changing a number, uh, you know, by in the third decimal point or third significant figure or something like that because of one reason or another, um, that's fine. It's when um, some authors decide it's an opportunity to revamp the paper, that's an issue. <laughs> um, acceptance means it's frozen, not, not oh, okay, I can make lot, any changes I want now without a referee, no. <laughs> So. Yeah, I think what authors don't realize is that if you do make changes at the proof stage and it's not just uh, changing small things, like if they add an author at the proof stage mm -hmm. or they change a whole title or something, all of those things go right back to the scientific editor to get their approval and we do need um, the reason why you've changed this during the proof stage or added authors during the proof stage and not during the review process. So we ask those questions before we send a message back to the 
scientific editor saying, okay, how do you want to handle this? And then we, you can either approve it or if it's extensive changes, it goes back to a reviewer. Absolutely. Uh, you make significant enough changes in your manuscript, definitely risks coming out of production and back into the review process. So yeah. authors, please try and avoid making changes post acceptance. Um, yes. Make everything a lot easier for you. <laughs> yeah, definitely. And for the uh, editorial operations team that you're talking to here. Yeah, and the copy editors. <laughs> and the copy editors, if it comes in that late. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, let's see, I had another question eluding what it was in my head at the moment. Uh, it was a post acceptance and yeah, I'll think of it. Okay, let's move this on. <laughs> <laughs> um, so is there anything else that you would like to say? Uh, about the AAS Journal's manuscript process to our authors, to our referees, to the larger community of our readers. Um, I would just like to thank them for submitting and uh, for the authors for submitting to our journals and for being the most patient people when we do have things that we have to go back and forth with them. They're very patient and understanding. And I'd like to thank the reviewers for doing the reviews for us. And um, you, they're, they're generally, uh -huh, I would say 99.999% the nicest people ever. So we appreciate both the reviewers and the authors. Cool. Alex, Alex you probably too. Oh yeah, honestly though, if you have any questions, don't, always email us, we're always here. And we will get an answer, I promise, in less than five minutes, usually. Yeah. So any problems you run across, just email us. We're here. Yes. Cool. Very cool. And I'd like to thank both of you for um, the jobs that you do on the editorial side of the house. It certainly makes things easier on the editorial, scientific editorial um, side of the house to have uh, a relatively smoother runway to operate on. So thank you both very much. Appreciate it. Thank you for having us here and um, for being one of the great lead editors and scientific editors. Well, thank you so much. Um, I try. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, very good. All right, everyone. Thank you so much. And we'll see you on the next one. Bye-bye. All right. Bye-bye.